Hi, I'm Christian Jones, and today you join me at my favourite venue, Western Pools in Oswestry. Street. Today what we wanted to talk about is typical open water lakes where you're fishing for F1s, carp and a few silvers in winter and how you get the best out of them. Today I'm just going to be fishing with maggots, keeping it nice and simple and hopefully talking to you about the different lines, the different rigs you need to employ to get the best out of these sort of lakes. So bait choice today is dead dead simple. All I've bought with me is two pints of red maggots. The reason I've chosen just to bring maggots today is because there's a lot of silvers in this lake and a lot of F1s. There is a few carp as well and I will catch all of them fishing with maggots. I could choose to fish with baits like pellets but it is quite selective. It's getting cold now and I just want to be getting bites. So that is why I've just chosen to bring maggots. I can feed them in a few different ways. I can fish a few different lines with that and it will cover all the options I need to cover on this peg today. Um, one thing that is worth talking about with maggots is to make sure you've got a good quality maggot. Make sure the nice big red maggots, nice and fresh, and it will help you get more bites. These I've just covered in a bit of maize, fresh maize, and I've put them underneath my hooded side tray to keep them nice and dry if we have any rain. That is very important with bait. Just, we're only fishing with maggots today. It's so important that they are good maggots. So we've come on the Stretton Pool today at Weston and we're on peg 30. It's quite a typical open water peg but what's quite interesting is we've got a bit of a deeper channel short and as you go further out it shallows up onto a bit of a bar where it's four and a half foot deep. So we've had to set a couple of rigs up to cover the different depths. The first rig I'm going to talk about is the deepest rig which is the short rig. We've got a pink hydroelastic, perfect for all the fish what we're going to be hooking today. Won't bump off hiding skimmers but if I hook some carp and some bigger F1s I'll be able to get them in no problem. The main line's 016 millimetre, which is nice and durable. It'll stop any tangles, and I'll never need to go as heavy as 016, uh, 016 in my hook length. I've got two number eight back shot. This just helps me to keep my rig nice and still if there's any wind, but also it helps me lay my rig in properly, which is what I'll talk about later when I'm actually fishing. The float's a Richie Wilson Maggie float, size 4x14. Perfect for the depth I've got there, short today, which is five and a half foot. And these are just a great float, carbon stem, and a nice thick bristle, uh, 1.5 millimeter. Going down to the shotting pattern, we've got a bulk of number nine shot and two number 11 droppers. The bulk's about 18 inch away from the hook and the droppers are spaced at six inch intervals below. And again, I've got a six inch hook length of 010 millimeter and an 18 F1 uh, pellet hook. So the next rig I'm gonna talk about is the long rig. Like I say, a little bit shallower, four and a half foot, but everything else is quite similar. I've got pink hydro, 016 millimetre main line, two back shot, but the float is a bit lighter, four by 12 Maggie, just to be in proportion with the depth of water what I've got today. I've got a bulk of number 10s, two number 11 droppers, six inch hook length and an 18 F1 pellet hook. The other rig I've set up, not sure if we'll use it today, but I always set it up when I'm fishing an open water lake like this, especially where there's a few silvers, is my shallow rig. If loose feeding's good today, and if there's a lot of silvers in my peg, they might rise up off the bottom. So that rig I've set up is on slightly lighter elastic, yellow hydro. This is just so when I'm fishing shallow, when I strike into a fish, it won't splash on the top. Again, I've got my back shot. Well, this float is a 4x10 winter Maggie, which takes a lot less shot, and it's just a nice light float that when I'm fishing shallow, I can lay my rig in and it'll settle through the water slowly. The shotting pattern on this is a strong bulk of number 11s. I think it's got six number 11s on there, roughly two inches apart. And again, a six inch hook length, but on this an 18 F1 maggot hook. Just a nice light, lighter gauge hook, 
when I'm fishing for silvers, should be perfect. Well, we're going to start the session now and I've got three lines today. I've got a line short at about six metres and I've got two long lines at around 14 metres. To feed my short line is quite simple. That, this is going to be quite positively fed today. I'm just going to lose feed 10 or 12 maggots twice every time I ship in and out. I can afford to feed my short line quite aggressively because if this line is going to come good, then I will be able to feed a bit of bait. If not, then my two long lines are going to be the lines I'm going to fish. Long, I'm going to start a bit more negative. I'm just going to go in and tap a few maggots in on both lines. Start off, I'm just going to tap in, say, 15 or 20 maggots on each. And I'm going to start on my right hand line and see how I get on. So I'm just going to put a double maggot on. And the pot I've decided to fish with to start with is my medium guru pot with my sprinkler lid on. And all that allows me to do is fill my pot up with maggots, feed me one line on my left and then go in on my right hand line, shake a few more maggots out and drop my rig in. So it just allows me to keep a couple of lines on the go. So I'm gonna ship out to my short line. I'm just gonna throw 10 or 12 maggots in twice. And that just starts that off. So then every couple of times when I'm shipping in and out for sort of every five minutes, I'll be feeding my short line. I'm just going to ship out to my long line on my left and tap half of the maggots out there in my pot. So that's sort of 20 maggots. And I'm going to start on my right hand line. It's just going towards the neck here and I feel like this is probably going to be my best line to get a few bites early in the session. So I fed my maggots and I'm just going to lay my float in Line me float up with my marker on the far bank and just hold me back shot level with the water so that it just keeps me float smack on the spot where it needs to be and it just holds me line tight and as my float trims up gives me a good chance of a bite on the settle. So I'm just looking out for some indications. What I'm trying to always work out early in a session is am I feeding the right amount of bait and am I introducing the bait into the peg in the correct way? So straight away I've had a bite there. And that's why just by tapping in a few maggots to start with, it can give you the chance of getting a quick bite. Because there's only 15 or 20 maggots in your peg and the fish can pick the bait out nice and easily. But obviously as I feed a few more times and later in the session, this might change and it might not be the best way to feed. So hopefully this is a nice F1. Nice F1, about a pound and a half, two pound. Lovely start to the session. Right, so just gone in on that left hand line and caught a carp so it looks like feeding it and priming it up for a couple of hours has really worked so hopefully I can just carry on with this for a little bit and get a good run of fish while I'm loose feeding my right hand line and then once this line sort of dries up I might be able to get one little run on my right hand line before coming short hopefully later and getting a really good run there so same thing again we're just trying to keep building up all our lines don't forget about any of your lines in winter that's such an important thing to sort of touch on is it, it can be so strange the line what you just haven't had hardly any bites on all day can just switch into action and be your best line so you've got to make sure you keep feeding all your lines not loads of bait but just regular amounts of maggots so loose feed me right hand line and getting on me left.
So there's a couple of ways you can lay your rig in. Probably the way I'd always start off is to just lay it in, in a straight line and hold my back shot tight to the float and just let it settle slowly. And this is the best way when it's difficult because you're just allowing the fish a lot of time to see your bait fall. So when they're not really feeding, they might just see that maggot fall past them and turn towards it and grab it. So that's great when it's difficult or you're just fishing for a handful of bites. But the other way I like to do it, when it's started to get good and I'm catching quick, is I'll lay my rig in and drop my bulk in line with my marker. And then I'll just fold my rig back on top of my bulk and just let it catch up. And that settles a lot faster. So when the fishing's good and I'm getting a lot of bites, by dropping it in like that, I can just speed myself up. And that's just a couple of little different options. And you've got to always think about what's the best way of doing that. And that's, an, that's another thing to note is like, cause the fish might start to intercept some bait now I'm loose feeding. Working my rig a lot more regular is important. And I've just upped a nice fish now. So what I would do is if I was sat there for a minute or so, maybe 90 seconds and I hadn't had a sign, I'll just lift my rig out, lay it back through the water. And being a bit more active tends to be best when you lose feeding. So I've had a lovely session today at Weston. The fish have been really on the feeding. What I tend to think is when the fishing is good, it's always worth having at least one of your two long lines where you do lose feed a bit more aggressive and just try and have a bit of a more positive line because it's great potting it in and potting it in's good and it's a consistent way of catching fish and I'd always start in that way. But when the fishing is good like it is today, loose feeding is just one of them ways of really creating a big area of bait Lots of fish feeding in your peg and you can catch them a bit quicker. Another nice F1. So we've got another fish on that loose fed line. Nice side by the looks. And we're just gonna conclude this long line now and have a look short because it's been so good on that right hand line. I think, I think short line will be good, you know, so. Hopefully you can see that the different ways I've fed to keep fish coming all through the day on that long two lines. I started off quite negatively, just putting a few maggots in on my right hand line. Fed my left hand line a bit heavier for later in the session, potted it a bit more regular and a bit more bait. And then we had a really good run there. So I loose fed a bit of bait to my right to try and bring that back to life. And we just had a really good run on that. So just altering your feed throughout the day, doing a few different things, a few different little tricks to keep some fish coming. You can hopefully tick along all through the match. And now hopefully we'll drop in short and have a really good run. Right, so we've been loose feeding that short line all day and I'm itching to get on it now. Um, what I always tend to do though when I go on it is I like to pot some maggots in because I think I just want to tighten that bit of feed up initially and just see what response I get. So same again, I'm just going to go in with that small Preston pot. I think that's been about right today, that about 20, 25 maggots. And I'm just going to pot it in, drop my rig on it. Hopefully we'll have a great run there now. So, pop me bait in, drop me bulk right where my bait's gone and just fold me rig on top of it and just lower it down nice and slow. I 
hopefully there's a few there and straight away this is where now in a match last hour last hour and a half you can sometimes double your weight in a match catch a real quick run of these nice and short so yeah you can control your peg really well you can get them in quick and generally I think when the fish come short they're feeding fish so they can be quite easy to catch with a nice F1 let's go out and get another so same again line me bait up with my marker tap my bait in drop my bulk right where my bait's gone in Fold my rig on top of my bulk, just hold it out that last sort of foot out the water. When it catches up, just lower it down nice and slow. So initially I've just gone in, like I said, and tightened my bait up by potting it. And that's great, if I can catch them like that, I'll continue to do that. But, as I've been loose feeding all day, it might be the case that that loose feed is very important on this line. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One of the ways is when I ship out, I'll go to flip my rig in and then I'll feed as I've just laid my rig in. That can be good and on harder days, that's probably the best way. But when you've got a lot of fish there settled in your peg, another way of doing it is when I hook a fish, I'll feed twice after I hook the fish, play my fish, net it, and then go back in and try and catch one without feeding. And then that helps keep them settled on the bottom. So you've just got to experiment with this. And at the minute, it seems like just potting my bait in is working well. So I'm just going to stick with that for now. Right. So I think we're going to call this the final fish of the day now. We've had an absolute brilliant session here today at Weston been brilliant we've caught on both our lines long caught potting and loose feeding long and now we've had a great run short and this feels like a good fish just goes to show simple bait maggots couple of lines a couple of simple rigs get your feeding right what sort of day you can have in winter and these sort of venues absolutely brilliant fishing <laughs>